So as you can see, I'm moving uh, along pretty good. I've got uh, all of my wiring in place, all of my uh, MOSFETs uh, positioned and wired in. I've got uh, C5 wired in. Uh, this is ground. This is my 12 volt input. D1 with the band towards the positive. I have my um, R12, which is the green wire, approximately uh, five inches long. I'm not sure if that's going to be long enough or short enough. I don't really know what output I'm going to get yet. But I have my uh, uh, sense positive resistor off of R12, which will go to S plus, S plus, and I have my negative, which will go to S negative on the board. So. S negative goes from the ground lug. S plus comes from the top of R12. <clears throat> I have all of the wires um, for the uh, drains and the sources all the same length, um, either tied together at R12 or tied together at the uh, cell uh, minus at this point for the white wires. So that's all going to compress like that and tuck it in and then all of my sense wires and voltage wires and gate controls will all come forward to the board, hopefully down one side. So that's it so far. Okay, I'm about ready to power it up. I've got my voltmeter on my 10 volts to make sure everything is stable. I have my power uh, supply dialed in at about 14 volts and I'm going to flip it on. And hopefully there's no smoke. Alright, I'm regulating it to 9.97 volts. No smoke. Don't smell anything. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the uh, the MOSFETs are turning on and off and I'm not going to run any current through them. I'm just going to put my ohmmeter across them. So I've got my ohmmeter tied to ground. And right here. Or you can go directly to, to um, ground ground. Right here. True ground. And set it in ohms. I had it pre-dialed in at 100% duty cycle, um, frequency at about 1.5 uh, kilohertz, and current limit somewhere kind of high. And it looks like I have a negative ohm, which is not theoretically possible. But what it is, is it's the gate leaking through. Um, and supplying just a little bit of current to ground. And so I'm going to turn up the duty cycle. Or perhaps I'm turning it down. Uh, there it goes. Okay, so I've got uh, about 39 ohms. And it looks like I have control. Okay, I'm going to turn it back to 100%. Which is basically all the way on. Okay. And I'm going to disconnect my own meter. And... So I'm going to leave it there, but what I'm going to do is measure that voltage drop across the MOSFETs. Um, and I need to hook up a small pump here. Um, pulls about 3 amps, just under. Um, excellent vacuum pump, by the way. Um, 
All right, so I want to power my pump up from here. Going to the positive lead. And we do not want to short out our power through the FETs, so make sure they always have a load on them. Um, and this is my ground. Ground black goes to cell. Hey, look at that. Sorry for the noise. I'll try to speak up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to adjust the duty cycle until it kicks in. Now you should be able to hear that high pitched frequency. Now I'm going to turn up the frequency. And you should hear a shift in that. It should be winding up. Now I can't tell you, tell you exactly what frequency that is, but it's about uh, uh, 1.9 or 2 kilohertz, somewhere in there. Alright, so if I take my ground and move it up to a cell negative and look at um, the source voltage, this is the amount of average voltage, uh, 8.6 uh, volts, that is being dropped across my load. If I go from ground to cell negative, this is the amount of voltage that is being dropped across the MOSFETs. So in an ideal situation at 100% duty cycle, there shouldn't be really anything dropped across your FET. But then as the cell heats up and current limiting kicks in, okay, as, as the current limiter kicks in, The voltage drop across the MOSFETs will increase. And that's where the heat is actually generated, is that voltage drop in the current. So ideally you don't want it to be, uh, um, you don't want your cell to be heating up too much. Now I can hear. <laughs> okay, there you have it. Just a basic power-up test. Uh, the next test will be uh, a higher current test. Probably not maximum, um, but probably variable. So I'll be able to add um, multiple devices, adding one at a time, um, and, uh, and testing the current limiting. And so I'll set the current limit at like 6 amps and then add a couple 2 amp loads or 3 amp loads um, as it's running and see if the uh, current limiter kicks in. This is H2O2 from H2O signing off.